Hi everyone, welcome to Draftscapes, I'm Chris Tuccio. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to draw a number of different ground and material textures for your landscape design plans. Stick around. Hi everyone. So as we know, it's really important to make sure that when you're presenting a project to a client, you really nail down which materials or ground textures you're going to be using within the project. And so in this lesson, what we're going to do is I'm going to go through a number of different very common materials and show you how to actually draft them in landscape design plans. So we're just going to gather up all regular drafting materials, we're going to throw it up in the air and let's get started. Okay everyone, so we're set up here on our drafting board and I've already started by creating six different um, circles with a three inch diameter and those circles are going to represent the boundaries for which my materials or my textures are going to go into. So we're going to just start from uh, the right hand side and we're going to work our way uh, to the left and um, I'm actually going to be, I, I was drawing the guides with my lead holder but I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to reach for my 1.0 uh, Copic pen or my drafting pen and we're going to start uh, just with a really simple one. So uh, the one that we're going to do here at this first one is going to sort of be a turf or lawn texture and this first one to start is going to help us in practicing what's called stippling. So stippling essentially is just holding your pen at 90 degrees and creating this little sort of chicken pock, this little dots uh, on your board. And the, the dots will actually form a gradient and the gradient of stippling will essentially be uh, much more uh, concentrated towards the boundaries where you want to have more of a shadow and it will slowly bleed and diffuse out to the center where you have less concentration of the stipples. And this is a really good texture for any sort of lawn or turf area where you don't really want to be heavy handed and having a lot of texture, uh, but you want some indication that there is a material there. So we're going to just simply stipple and you'll hear the sound of it if you're doing it right. It'll just be like little dots, like you're knocking on a door constantly. And you could feel it going around. And so if you actually want to start doing more contours or show little different areas within a lawn, you can create these little patches that go through the body of the lawn itself. So if this was like a mound of lawn area in which we wanted uh, just an open area for people to sit or play or throw a frisbee or something, we can create it uh, to look like that. And then we can show topographical changes by the relative concentration of the stipples within the lawn area. Okay. And with practice you'll see uh, that you can get really good at showing depth uh, even with other types of materials by adding just this stippling. But simple stippling uh, will create a nice little concentration of texture in open areas, whether or not they're lawn or, or whatever, maybe mulch uh, that you want them for. So it's good practice to try and do uh, stippling. The next one is kind of a simple one as well, and it's more for aggregate or gravel. Okay, so I'm going to put aggregate um, and maybe uh, we'll say sand, something like that. The difference between this type of material and the stippling or the turf in the lawn is we're going to have these little circles. Okay, so hopefully that shows up okay on the camera, but we're going to have these little circles show up and they're large to, to small circles, but they're not dots, they're not stipples, they're little circles. Okay. And I'm doing it with a 1.0. You'll see when you actually do it uh, on your own that the, the 1.0 marker is a little thick for this, uh, but I want to make sure it reads well on the camera. And so I'm doing these little circles. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to reach for my 0.5 and I'm going to come and I'm going to stipple now. I'm going to stipple over the top of it. And this is going to create more of a sand texture or more of an aggregate where I have, so with regular base aggregates like three quarter inch process or, you know, not so much stone dust, but some of your other aggregate base materials that you might use for paving, 
um, or gravel for a driveway. Uh, this is going to represent that you're going to have some of the larger aggregate sizes, some of the larger stones, uh, and then you're also going to have some of the smaller ones or the fines. And so this kind of shows that. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, and I, I want to show and, and make sure I, I mention this, when you're doing any sort of texture material and you're using it for a landscape design plan, it's important not to be very heavy handed and, and concentrate all of your emphasis on the entire boundary or the entire area that you're drawing in. Notice how I left these larger white areas. That's really important. You don't necessarily have to make sure that you're stippling or rendering or texturizing every single little piece of the bounded area because you have to think of it from the standpoint of a presentation. When you step back and you look at the actual drawing from farther away, if you have a lot of little detail in here while you're drafting over it, it's going to look really dense and heavy handed from far away. So you want to leave areas of white patches just to make sure that you show uh, that there is some space, some breathability. It doesn't look like it's all dark or black. You want to be able to read the trees through the forest. Okay, so that's aggregate and sand, pretty simple. So we start with stippling, we go to aggregate and sand. The next one is just a derivation off of this. And this we're gonna do something like concrete, okay? Uh, or some sort of pavement or asphalt. So we're gonna take the same technique, we're gonna have circles, we're gonna have dots, but we're gonna add in some triangles, okay? Some triangles, some squares, some triangles, some squares, some circles. Triangles, squares, circles. Okay, the reason that we're adding these is we're going to give it more of a harder edge to this texture. Okay, concrete is a harder material. Uh, even though typically in Portland cement, in, I mean in concrete, you'll get the standard elements of Portland cement, uh, some of the aggregates, whether it's gap graded or well graded concrete, and then you're going to have regular sand in it too. So um, the only difference really between the concrete and the sand is these sort of harder edged triangular or square uh, components within the texture. And that's okay, that's the whole point. It's gonna add a little more of a, a rigidity to the concrete. So it's actually emphasizing the permanence of the material when you're doing it like this. And then we're gonna add some stipples. It's okay if it's somewhat uniform here. And then maybe put a little more emphasis in one area to add a little more depth. And that's a nice concrete texture, okay? And you can whitewash this or wash it with some sort of uh, cool gray to make it really pop as a concrete texture. That's your standard concrete texture right there, okay? Now, uh, the next one is actually gonna be uh, a derivation off of, of, of each other. So we're gonna leave the lawn, sand, and concrete, and we're gonna do something uh, much different. We're gonna do hatching, okay? Okay? So one of the things that we uh, don't talk about a lot is what the purpose of hatching is for landscape design. And so uh, people have a number of different uses for it. But essentially what hatching is, is drawing straight lines parallel to each other, close together for the purposes of emphasis. So this, these lines that I'm drawing, just freehand, that's hatching. And the closer you draw the lines, the more emphasis uh, or concentration you're giving to that material. And notice how I'm not drawing them all the same length. I'm, I'm uh, making sure that there's some difference uh, within the lengths to add a little more of customization to that particular element. Um, but I could actually have these be very close together uh, so that it looks as if it's a, a very heavy or dark material or I could space them out farther apart, make it a more lighter material. But the hatching is very good for purposes of mulch or for shading a particular area. And I could add the hatching on top of any of my other types of elements to create sort of a flare to it or a little bit of material texture. Outside of hatching, you can also do what's called cross hatching. Okay, cross hatching. Okay, with cross hatching, I'm doing the same thing, so I'm going to start the same way that I did before. This time I'm going to do it on the bottom. Okay. 
But now I'm going to come in and I'm going to go 90 degrees from there and I'm actually moving my body right now and I'm going to go 90 degrees from there and I'm going to go across the lines. And this adds just a little more texture. So I actually like the cross hatching texture for mulch. Okay, I actually like this as a mulch texture. Okay, when I have open areas of mulch, I might fill it in with this kind of cross hatching, and then I have uh, my trees or shrubbery, and then I color it in a little with some brown, and it really reads quite vibrantly. Okay, uh, it's not really heavy handed, there's not a lot of texture as in uh, what we would see for aggregate sand or concrete, um, but it adds just enough little texture to show um, a material there. Okay, so that's hatching and cross hatching, both very useful uh, for landscape design purposes. Okay, now I'm actually going to put my 1.0 uh, pen away and I'm going to grab my 0.5 and I'm also going to grab my triangle. Okay, so I'm just going to use a regular triangle here and we're going to start by doing two different types of materials that are very related to each other but um, different than what we've done just now and that's brick and wood. Okay, when I say brick, I'm actually referring to more of pavers, if anything else, but I typically like to think of it as brick. Okay, so if you're doing this, uh, you want to try and do it with a parallel rule. Now, my parallel rule or a T square, so that all of the different lines are, are true horizontal. Um, I'm without one uh, currently, so I'm just going to freehand it and, and see how we do, um, but it should be pretty easy. I'm just going to draw uh, freehand um, some horizontal lines just to start. Okay, and I'm going to eyeball that they're equidistant and parallel. I'm doing a pretty good job so far. Okay, just a few of them all the way down the circle. And when you get better at this, you can eyeball it a lot better. Oh, I moved the entire page. Okay, so let's make sure that I'm back on track here. Okay. And we'll do maybe a couple more. Okay. And last one. Okay. So now that I have that, really all I have to do is just identify the joints of the pavement. So if I'm going to do something like a, a running bond, okay, let's just say I'm going to do something it's called a running bond pattern or a stretcher bond pattern. The joints are going to line up where I have a joint in between and centered on the bricks above it or below it or the pavers above it and below it. So I'm just going to draw uh, some vertical lines like so. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw my joints centered on the paver above and below it like this. Okay, so now as I alternate I will have the joints line up with every other uh, line. So these joints will be mimicked and, uh, and mirrored here and here and here. And I'm going to, every time I skip a line, I take the exact same joints I just did and I draw them again. Okay, so you see how these joints these joints mimic each other and these joints mimic each other and I go all the way down, okay? You do two lines at once or you could do a line at, at uh, one line at a time. It really depends on how you like to work. Okay, and then you'll note that I had some uh, areas where I could fill in here. And this takes some time. But once you get used to it, it's really simple, really easy. Okay, and you form a pavement pattern just like so. And then what I can do, because you know this is kind of monotonous, it's not really uh, that vibrant, uh, brick or aggregate or pavers, you know, they're not just flat unless you're using some sort of really finished uh, you know, slate or some really polished material. You know, there's a texture to them. So you could stipple, add little stipples uh, on over the top of some of the pavers. Um, just to give them a little texture. Uh, you could add some of the pavers with a little bit of hatching, like so, uh, to make them somewhat textured uh, so they look a little better. Okay, add a little more complexity to them. 
Okay, and then you can wash it with uh, one of your markers uh, or colored pencils to give it uh, the actual color uh, that you want for your landscape design plan. And then uh, this is specifically for a running bond pattern, but depending on the pattern you use, if it's a stacked bond, if it's a herringbone, uh, whatever pattern you use, it's done the same way. You would figure out exactly where the joints are, uh, you would ensure that the joints are lined up correctly, and then you could add the texture that you want over here. I, I will say though too, when you're doing this, uh, you know, we use the entire circle pretty much uh, for this texture, but just like I did with the aggregate sand, the turf, and the, and the concrete, um, you might find if I have a really large area uh, that's supposed to be paved, I might not want to actually draw every single brick uh, paver in that large area. I might just do part of a boundary, part of another boundary towards the edge, and then I'll leave it open like I did these in the middle. That will assist in uh, making the drawing a little lighter, not as heavy handed. You don't want uh, all your dark lines centered in one area because it's really gonna take away uh, from the rest of your drawing. So, uh, you know, you'll practice. As you practice, you'll get the hang of, of what you like and what reads well from afar. I will say when doing these, you know, I'm on top of the drawing right now doing this video, but if I was to do this for an actual project, every now and then I would actually stand up and I would look from farther away to see how the actual material read from a little farther, as if some, someone's sitting and looking at a presentation that I'm giving, okay? So the next final one is gonna be almost the exact same type of thing as we did with the pavers, uh, but this is going to be a wood texture. So as if I'm doing some sort of deck um, or uh, some uh, uh, boardwalk, uh, something in which I'm using a lot of wood. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm actually drawing parallel lines again uh, for my decking material. And I did pretty well without my T-square last time, so I'm gonna see if I could do the exact same technique. And all I'm doing in my head is, is you get better at this, is just counting your movements. And uh, if you haven't already looked at my video on uh, the body mechanics of drafting, you'll know that muscle memory is uh, really important here. So as you get better, uh, and more experienced in drafting, muscle memory is just gonna come natural and you're gonna be able to time this out. Okay, one last one. All right, so now for decking material, uh, like we did for paper, we're gonna do the, the vertical joints, but uh, wood, it's much longer, right? And it doesn't necessarily follow all the time uh, set patterns as our pavers do. So we're gonna actually have boards that are much longer. Maybe I have a board like that, and then maybe a board like that. Maybe I'll put one there too. Maybe a board here that doesn't just quite line up with the one above it do a board here. And so I'm just doing vertical lines at sort of arbitrary areas. Maybe one of them, I just have one line, so you actually don't see, uh, maybe I'll just do this, it's the longest one. Uh, you don't see a joint for quite some time. It's a really long deck board. You know, that's common. Maybe something like that. And if there is a particular dimension for your wood or a pattern to your, your decking, then you can add it. But most of the time it's, it's somewhat arbitrary where the cuts are sometimes, especially for uh, sort of long boardwalks. Okay, so then uh, if this is true decking, uh, we're gonna have screws uh, or nails uh, in the, the corners or the ends of the timber elements. So we're gonna add little dots or stipples like so at the ends of all of our deck boards. This is where they're screwed in. Now, typically you might see people saying that they're nailed in, but we all know that screws are much better for decking than the nails as long as they're galvanized. So we're gonna add our screws to the decking. Okay, so a couple quick dots. Okay, and there's our wood, and again, now, this is just the, the polished, but we have to add some sort of texture. So now I'm using a 0.5. This might actually be a little large for this purpose, uh, but I'm actually gonna draw some striations, okay? Some of the grain for the wood. I'm not gonna do it on every one, but I'm gonna draw horizontal lines to indicate 
sort of the, the grain of the wood. And this is much larger than, than I would like. Um, but I want to make sure it holds up on the video. I'm just going to uh, reach for a, a smaller sized uh, pen. I'm going to go with maybe my 0.3. I'm going to grab that. And that's a lot better. So that's going to give me a line that I like a lot more. It's much thinner. Okay. So it's not as, as thick. And so I'm going to draw these sort of horizontal lines uh, across my body so that uh, I find that they show the grain. And then you'll also have these little knots. So you might have a, a knot like that in the wood, some sort of uh, graining where it looks like that, maybe something like that. It add a good amount of texture. And then you could always add a little more uh, stippling. just to add a little more vibrancy to the texture material, okay? And that is going to show us uh, sort of the common texture for wood, okay? So we have a nice grainy textured wood finish. And then when I came in and I added color to this, I might make sure that I color different boards, uh, darker browns, maybe some auburns, a little bit of orange in there, uh, so that they're not all the exact same color because again, that's gonna take away from this nice little textured rendering that we just did with our, with our wood, okay? So uh, with that, we have a variety of different materials that you can use for your landscape design plans, turf, sand or aggregate material, concrete, mulch uh, or hatching in general, pavers and brick, and then finally wood. And as you practice these, again, do them a number of different times, do iterations of them, do them larger, do them smaller, uh, however you wanna do them, but practice makes perfect, okay? And so as you go through these, you'll find ones that you like, ones that you don't like, and modifications that you might make. Okay. Hopefully you like this. If, if, if you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out draftscapes.com where you're going to see this in addition to a number of different resources for landscape designers. Okay. I'll see you at the next video.